The first guy we're going to bring up to the night is going to be, his name is Kojo Benny Haney. So I moved here when I was about like uh, nine years old. My name is Kojo again, once again. My last name is pronounced Bonahini, just so that, you know, anybody ever wants to come up to me and talk to me. But um, yeah, I grew up in uh, New Jersey, frankly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I hate that place. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, living in New Jersey was very interesting because you grew up around a lot of different cultures and you're about like 10 miles away from New York. So I had a, I had a really good friend. He was really, really smart and uh, he was a Middle Eastern and his name is Amber. And uh, Amber was very, very smart, but uh, he had a problem with English and the problem was that he, he understood English very, very well, but he used the wrong words in the wrong context. And, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's already headed to the joke. Um, Amber would run up to me one day, he's like, Kojo, look, man, look. I like the tall buildings in New York, man, and all the beautiful places, man. Let's plot a trip to New York City. And um, I really had to pause and say, Amber, you can't really use the word plot in that entire sentence because, uh, you know, the NSA listens to everything you do. And, uh, <laughs> Um, at that point, you know, I really had to sit him down and really, you know, talk about that. You know, hey, man, you can't do that anymore. And um, I remember, <laughs> he's a very smart guy, and he likes to, you know, make jokes. So uh, one time, he, uh, he tried to do the same thing, but this time he said, look, man, look, um, I like you, man. You're a really good guy, man. You know, we're on the train on the way back from New York. You know, we, we plotted the trip to New York eventually. And, uh, <laughs> On our way back, he was like, hey man, like, you're a very cool guy, man, you know, and, uh, you know, you have a great personality, man, you've got the bomb. And I said, hey, look, we're in the train right now, you can't really do that. And uh, he kept on emphasizing it, so I just had to go get it. And I said, look, man, yes, I got the bomb D. It can blow up any tunnel that you can think of, but this is not the place to use such words. So, uh, <laughs> I had, to, I had to really, really teach him stuff like that. But uh, he um, he recently called me and he got married, so um, that was cool. Uh, so I'm I'm 24. Uh, you can't tell because you know I look like you know, 12 basically. You know, you know, a 12 year old with a beard. And um, he called me and he's he's super excited because he just got married and um, he was telling me how wonderful it is. And I said, look, man, look. I'm still young and I'm still dating, man, and I'm really trying to find the one, you know? I'm really trying to find somebody I can settle down with, you know? But I'm tired of 20-year-olds, man. They're annoying. They want to do way too much. Way too much, man. That's why I go for the older ladies, man. Older women know exactly what they want. Yeah, she's not. Yeah, she knows exactly what she wants, yeah. How many older ladies? Uh, single ladies around here, you know? Yeah, she rose her hand really quickly. Yeah. She knows exactly what she wants, yeah. But, you know, you know, one time I went to an old lady's house and, uh, you know, she, she was just like, hey, look, drop your pants, you know? Let's get it on. And I was like, whoa, this is like a Harvey Weinstein casting, but, you know, at least this time it was with consent. So, you know, we got away from that one pretty well, but. You know, I told Amber, man, look, like, I really want to take my time and everything, and uh, one of the things that really, really, I didn't want to tell him is that, you know, if I get married, I'm going to have to have kids, and the thing about having kids is that you're going to have, like, you know, a son or something like that. How many guys have boys in here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have a secret to tell you guys, man. Look, like, your son is secretly planning to kick your ass. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, when you're at home, anything he's in his room masturbating, no, he's just practicing. Like, like he's really practicing his moves to like give you the lat, like the death punch. So, like he, he's probably gonna go home and like check on his son. Like son, we're the nut chest. Like, yeah, exactly. But yeah, you know, these are these are the struggles of a 24 year old man from New Jersey. Like, you know, these are things that you have to deal with, man. But um. Living down here, uh, I moved to South Georgia. That's where I actually live at, in uh, like hip town. But I'm not gonna say more that. But it's been it's been weird because I'm away from all my friends, and uh, one of my friends, uh, one of my female friends, and I know that's a myth. You know, no guy ever has a female friend, but that's. Uh, she called me and she's like, "Hey, look, I'm re I'm really really tired of all of this. She's been working out like crazy. And, uh, and I'm somebody who's into fitness. 
And you know, me being a responsible, you know, 24 year old guy who's into fitness, I gave her the best fitness method that worked in the 70s and 80s. Cocaine. I, guess, I mean, who who was around in the 70s and 80s? Like, you didn't see anybody else fat in their 20s because everybody was doing cocaine around that time, so you know. Now she can live a wonderful, healthy life, slim, tight waist, and a healthy cocaine habit. So, you know. But thank you guys so much for uh, giving me this. Uh, this was my first time doing stand up comedy. Uh, uh, my heart is literally about to fall out of my chest, so I'm just going to go sit down and I'm going to my car right now. So, thank you. Uh, coming up next to the stage, uh, you know him, you love him, he's the reason we're all here tonight. I uh, appreciate you putting this on. And uh, welcome to the stage, Luke Morris. Good evening, everybody. How are we doing? So usually I talk about Yellowfin and whatever real estate market we're talking about. Tonight we're doing a little comedy. I hope you enjoy it. My wife, Jessica, and I have uh, three-year-old twins. You guys have children that are going to raise your hand. So, um, whenever we were debating, not debating, my wife decided we were going to have children, which is fantastic. So, if, 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 if you're married to an attorney, you know what debate looks like. So excited to have babies. And, and initially, we, did, we didn't think we were having multiple, clearly. They teach you that you're going to have a baby every time you have sex when you're 16. It turns out it's a little more difficult than that. It's like a 48-hour window where you can actually make a baby. So if you have a 15-year-old child, give them a heads up. Like it's kind of bullshit. So um, Jessica and I, we, we're pregnant, right? We're so excited. We're praying. We're, we're so excited. We've, we've been so blessed, right? And uh, one night Jessica comes to me. This is a very touching moment. Jessica comes to me and says, honey, I love you immensely, and I'm sure that we'll, we'll have another baby, but I'm not sure we're gonna have this one. It was a, it was a tough time. We, we, we laid together, we prayed, and we went to the doctor the following morning, about 8.15. The doctor comes out and says, we'll take uh, Mrs. Morris back. Luke, you can wait out here. I said, well, why would I wait out here? That's my child, my wife. Clearly, I have something to do with this. So I questioned Jessica, I have something to do with this, right? She said, yeah, that's, 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 that's your baby, sweetheart. I said, okay, well, I, I appreciate an invite to the room, if that's possible. So a couple minutes later, what seems like an eternity, the doctor finally comes out and says, Mr. Morris, we'd like to bring you back to the, uh, to the, whatever, like the room or the hospital room, right? So I say, uh, doctor, I walk in, my wife is not sad, she's not happy, she's emotionless. She's not, like, over the moon or anything. We're concerned we lost the baby that we had finally conceived, right? So I walk in and the doctor's looking at me, like I'm supposed to have the answers. I'm like, listen, doc, <laughs> I went to UF, but I don't have a med degree. Like, I'm here to help for you to make sure that we can have a baby, right? Like, that's the deal. So I asked the doctor, I said, sir, can you just make sure that the baby's okay? All I want to know is that the baby's okay. And the doctor looks me square in the eye and says, which one? <laughs> I said, I don't know, jackass, the one down the hall? <laughs> so there was one of those moments where the Tenor Novello's face should have been like, Ugh! Anyway, that's my time. Thanks, guys. Next coming up on the stage, we're going to have a, another good comedian. His name is Matt Morris. All right, uh, how about a round of applause? How's everyone doing this evening? All right, get a little better. Round of applause. How's everyone doing? All right, better. So, uh, I haven't been on stage in a while. Uh, during this time, uh, I've taken a couple of personal observations. Uh, one, I hate moving. Uh, I think I'd rather be having a root canal followed by a colonoscopy while front row at a Justin Bieber concert in half the moon. Uh, and you know how they say, uh, you know how many friends you have by who comes to your funeral? I say bullshit. You know how many friends you have by who helps you move? So I'll call my friends and I'll lie to them. I'll be like, hey, uh, not this weekend. 
But next weekend, I'm gonna need some help moving. You might help me? And they're like, oh, Matt, if it was this weekend, I could do it. I just can't do it next weekend. To which I respond, congratulations, my friend. I just lied. See you at 8.30 tomorrow. Uh, recently read that the uh, American Medical Association came out and said that being obese is now considered a disease. I say more power to you. I know what I'm doing on Monday. You call to work saying I caught four pounds over the weekend. I don't think I'll be able to make it in. <laughs> or uh, if you don't like that one, you can try this one. Uh, say, call in and say, I think I have anal glaucoma. I'm gonna say, what is that? I don't see my ass coming into work tomorrow. <laughs> um, so with that being said, I also read that the uh, San Diego Police Department has recently came out and said that uh, they're going to put a preparation plan in for a zombie apocalypse. And I thought, hmm, it's a bit odd. I've seen all the movies. I've watched Walking Dead. I would say this motion should be all the preparation you would need to avoid a zombie. Yeah, yeah, it'll get worse, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the holidays are coming around, and uh, with that being said, uh, Hess gas stations are going to start trying to peddle their Hess trucks to kids as if anyone wants to buy one. It's 2019, not 1919. I think uh, they even have to, in the commercial, kids are like, the Hess truck is here? It should probably be followed by, who really cares? <laughs> then imagine uh, being that child uh, Christmas when you're expecting the new uh, PlayStation 5 and your parents give you a Hess truck. <laughs> it makes real engine noise, buddy. Can't wait for that uh, viral video where the kid has a total meltdown. So, uh, I was watching the Scripps National Spelling Bee the other day. Anyone familiar? Scripps? I mean, if you watch it, you feel like an idiot, because you know, <laughs> no one can spell those words except for those geniuses. And um, I saw that, uh, I thought to myself, how do people in China have a spelling bee? I don't even think the word is mushu. But, uh, give me a squiggly line going on here. Maybe a little horizontal something. A little uh, dot on top of mushu. <laughs> so uh, through watching those uh, you know, scripts, I ran into some commercials. And um, sometimes I feel like uh, these aren't relevant anymore in today's society. And uh, ladies, please do not take offense to this, but uh, tampon commercials. Ladies, do we still need those? Do we think there's a woman in 2019 that ruins her outfit once a month, or ruins her seat in her car, and watches TV one night, runs across a tampon commercial, and thinks, huh, Mount Donna even did something for that. <laughs> I might get a little rough. So. That, that was it for the ladies part. Uh, so, uh, I also watched a commercial, and uh, I'm sure we've all seen it. It's about the uh, starving people in uh, whatever country they live in. I'm sure we've all seen it. And they've got some uh, guy, he's throwing out obscure facts like uh, 10, cent a the 10 cent a day will feed these people for a year. Or uh, 100 people die every hour in this country due to starvation. Well, I started doing some thinking. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but if 100 people die every hour, and there's 24 hours in a day, wouldn't that be 2,400 less mouths you have to worry about feeding? I would say within a week, there'd be a smorgasbord of food going around. All right, so uh, on that one, I'm going to leave you with this, uh, talking about commercials. So uh, I was in Publix the other day, and I was going down an aisle, and I ran across this gym. I bought it because uh, I'd never seen it before, and I didn't know it really existed. And it's called Spotted Dick Sponge Pudding. And it's made by Heinz. Spotted Dick Sponge Pudding. And I thought to myself, imagine trying to come up with a commercial idea for this product. Tired of regular dick? Try Spotted Dick Sponge Pudding. Scoot down to the last morsel. Or maybe, uh... Spotty Dick Sponge Pudding, voted better than Drippy Dick by a two to one margin. 
So with that being said, I think I'm going to uh, open a restaurant. And uh, the only thing I serve for dessert is spotted dick sponge pudding with a <laughs> topping of kumquat glaze. Just so I can see the people have an awkward expression when they say, could I get your spotted dick sponge pudding with kumquat glaze? And yes, you may. And it may take one and a half, two minutes to come out. No pun intended. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. You have a good night. stage. This man is hilarious. He's a regular at the Comedy Zone. Make some room for Mr. Wes Johnson. My name is Wes Johnson. I'm not a stand-up comic. If at any point in this that I do stand up, y'all have had way too much to drink. <laughs> or I've had too much to drink. One of the two. It'll be a party. Uh, a little bit about myself, uh, being in a wheelchair makes things more difficult for me. Uh, like there's never a rant to get on the stage. Uh, I'm usually one of the only comedians who needs a big hand. <laughs> They're like, let's give a big hand to Wes Johnson, woo! No really, we need two guys with strong backs to lift him up there. <laughs> and then that puts a lot of pressure on me to be funny, because if I'm not, and everybody leaves, I've been stuck up there before. <laughs> this is gonna mean you know, I'll be here all week, you know? Uh, this is good. Some people have a hard time laughing at a guy in a wheelchair. Uh, not you, monsters. <laughs> I'll talk to it real quick. That's good. Makes my job easy. I'll tell you my story. <laughs> That's a natural pause. I do that every time. Uh, eight years ago, I was in an off-road accident. It was a regular road, I just went off it. <laughs> I actually flipped the Jeep over four times, so technically it was an off-road, on-road, off-road, on-road, off-road, on-road, off-road, on-road accident. But who's counting, right? The police counted. That's it. The police counted. And then they had the nerve to write me a ticket for reckless driving, which I thought was garbage, because when the police got there, I wasn't driving. But how did they know? I'd actually been thrown clear of the vehicle, uh, so leaving the scene of an accident, that's on me. I'll take that one. But it turns out they can't write you a ticket for that if you flew away. Like, it wasn't like, like, I read them like, I gotta go. I'll just hide over here. You know, if you're thrown, thrown from a vehicle, you get a pass on that one. The accident left me paralyzed with no feeling, uh, and a broken neck. The broken neck left me with no feeling uh, from about here down, which is good for comedy, because if you don't laugh at my jokes, you can only hurt my feelings from here up. <laughs> There's like a 75% chance if you don't laugh, I won't care. You know, in a chair, don't care. That's my motto. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, they uh, lifelighted me from where I was to the Shands in Gainesville, uh, which the Shands in Gainesville, that's the one you want to be at. If uh, you've ever been to a Shands downtown, you'll know. <laughs> um, but the Shands in Gainesville is like 100 miles away from where I wrecked, which means you know you're jacked up when they're flying past other hospitals to get you to a Shands. <laughs> like, we could have gone to Baptist downtown, we could have gone to Baptist south, we could have hit up Ed Frazier and McClinney. But we went all the way to Shands in Gainesville. Like, like I was saying, I woke up halfway and they were serving peanuts. <laughs> if you're ever on a life flight and there's a movie playing, you're, you better say a prayer. Yeah. So uh, my sense of humor came back before my other senses did, so I had to find ways to entertain myself. And I'll share a couple of those with you if you're ever in the hospital. What I like to do is first thing in the morning, before they come in to wake you up, like wake up like two or three minutes early, and then when they come in, just lay in the bed like this. <laughs> in about two minutes, bells are gonna start to go off, whistles are gonna go off, lights are gonna start to flash, and you're gonna get to meet the whole staff. <laughs> It's a great way to make a first impression. They love it. Got to meet all the doctors. 
Uh, another game I like to play, and this one works late at night when you're bored, is called Call Button Jeopardy. <laughs> And what you do is like 2 in the morning when you're bored, you just start hitting your call button as many times as you can. And then when the nurses finally answer, you say, who is George Washington? I'll take presidential candidates for a thousand, please. And you just see how many points you can rack up before they turn your call button off. It's usually a thousand. They, uh, they catch it. They catch wind of that game pretty quick. Also, if you just keep going, who is George Washington? Uh, they send you to a different floor of the hospital. You get to meet the brain injury unit. Like, we don't know if he's joking or if he hit his head harder than we thought. Uh, I made it out. I made it out of Shans alive. Uh, after a month, they sent me to the, uh, to, uh, the fun part is uh, they send you to a rehab hospital after that. So I got here to Jacksonville at, at uh, Brooks Rehab, and uh, that's where the fun, fun part starts because a rehab hospital is like jail for people in wheelchairs. You know, there's not like bars and, you know, locks and gates or anything. Uh, they just have curves that don't have ramps. So you're like, I'm out of here. As soon as I find a ramp, they're like, good luck. Uh, if you're, they use prison terms. If you're good, they'll take you to rec therapy out in the courtyard. Like, I watched Locked Up. I know those are prison terms. You're not full of me, Brooks Rehab. There's gangs there. Uh, you don't hear about them because there's no violence. We're all Crips. <laughs> the initiation is back for in the pain of the neck. But it comes with parking right up front. You know? Woo! Which I'm glad to say now, I'm using. I started driving again. Woo! Woo! Yeah, 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 good for me. Not so good for the rest of y'all. I, I am, as a courtesy to y'all, I'm going to stick around about 15 minutes after the show and let y'all get a head start. No need to leave right now. Um, no, I, I wanted to, to get a new Jeep because uh, I love the Jeep. There's something about a Jeep you can't explain unless you drive one. Anybody here drive a Jeep? Woo! Ooh, yeah, there we go. Uh, I recommend getting a uh, something else. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I love the Jeep. There's something you can't explain. You got the wind going through your hair. Like there's nothing holding you back. You got that sense of freedom. And that's just being ejected from one. <laughs> like you're not going to get that being thrown out of a Prius. <laughs> You might get 90 miles to the gallon, but Jeep's got ejection technology built in. You take the top off, you get thrown out the top. You take both doors off, get thrown out either side. You're not getting that from a Prius, I'll tell you. But I did get another Jeep. Uh, it turns out my mother and my wife were against it. Uh, so what I did get was a sweet minivan. Woo! Yeah, less woos. Less woos than sweet minivan. I get it. It's hard to sell somebody on a sweet minivan, but I'll try. Uh, it's got hydraulics on it. Woo! They lower the ramp down so I can get in. Um, it doesn't have a front seat, so I just slide under the wheel. I lean my chair back real, real deep like Joe Cool. It's got a lever on the side. When I push it forward, it hits the gas. When I pull it down, it hits the... No, down is the gas, forward is the brake, down is the gas. Yeah, yeah, forward is the brake, down is the gas. All I'm saying is I'm going to give you a head start. I will take it. Oh. It's so sweet somebody stole it. Yeah, back up a tick. It doesn't have a front seat. So somebody stole that, they stand it up. Which is the ultimate insult to a guy in a wheelchair. If you steal a handicap man and then use your good legs to do it, yeah, there's a special place for guys like that. And I never thought to myself, you know, hey, maybe a, uh, maybe a guy in a wheelchair needed to steal a van. You know, maybe he had some kind of handicap crime he needed to commit. It's the first rule of handicap crime is you don't use your own van. Everybody knows that. Uh, no, it was two regular guys. My hunches were right. Uh, and they used the van to rob an appliance store. That's where the police caught them. And I didn't know if they wanted to rob an appliance store or like we should steal a van with a ramp on it. Or if it was a crime of opportunity and they were like, you know, 
We could fit a washer and dryer back here, you know? Whatever it was it was working for, because when the police called him, there was a washer and dryer in the back, and underneath the passenger seat was a bag with $1,000 in it, which I told the police, thank God they didn't find my money. <laughs> That's right where I keep it, you know, you can't trust people these days. You gotta hide that. I tried to convince it was my washer and dryer too. They're like, we don't think so, sir. I'm like, you don't know me. I'm handy capable. Have you seen this ramp? So I couldn't even be mad that they stole the van because they didn't steal the van. They rented it for a thousand dollars, and I'm good with that. That's the business I'm going to be in: handicap van rentals. No questions asked. Do what you got to do. Leave the money under the driver's seat. Leave the money under the passenger seat, and bring it back on Monday with a full tank of gas. I'm good with that. I uh, found another business I'm, I'm thinking about being in. I found out about it last week. My friends offered to take me to Disney World. Uh, we couldn't go to Disney World. We went to Universal Studios. I was a venture. Thought that would be a better fit. Uh, and they were going to pay for everything. I was like, that's awful nice. But when you're in a wheelchair and people start to be too nice, you got to start to wonder, is this a make-a-wish? <laughs> I'm like, I know I was sick last week, but I know it's just flu season. If you know something, say something. Let me know. Turns out they just wanted to skip the lines. <laughs> Which, did y'all know that handicapped people no longer get to skip the lines? No. At amusement parks? No. No, neither did my friends. <laughs> That's like a $150 lesson on treating people in wheelchairs with a little bit of respect. You know? Uh, it turns out that people were hiring disabled people as travel guides to take them to amusement parks. Oh my god. It's true. Disgusting. Exactly what I said. I've been in this chair for eight years and no one has ever offered to take me to a music park. <laughs> Disgusting. I live in Florida. I'm on the way. Scoop me up. We'll go. I'll drive. You think a roller coaster's terrifying? Get in the van with me. <laughs> yeah. Then I got to thinking, like, like, how do you even get that job? So I just see you at a bar and they're like, hey man, you go to Disney World? Uh, yes, please. Uh, is there like a disabled pimp service you can call? Uh, Gippin' Pimpin'. If they break the spine, you skip the line. <laughs> and we got the deal, pay by the wheel. <laughs> yeah, how do you even get that? Yeah, turn to the amusement park, shut it down. You know, it's a tough life for a wheelchair pimp. <laughs> to find that's a business I could have gone into to shut it down. I uh, I just recently uh, my wife and I have decided that uh, it's time to start ha trying to have kids. You know, uh, that's according to my mother and her mother. Uh, we've reached that moment. They want some grandkids, uh, but I'm worried uh, because I don't know what I'm going to do, how am I going to discipline a child once it learns to climb on things? Once it, once it can, figures out that it's four inches from freedom at any time, and just climb on the bed and do what it wants to, what am I going to be like, get off that bed! I will thank you as soon as I find a ramp! <laughs> I don't have one of those reachers like your grandma has, just snatch them up. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to have the only kid with Velcro on it. <laughs> Get over here. You're getting a spanking. <laughs> yeah. I told that joke the other day at the comedy zone, a lady in the front said, That's child abuse. I said, No, that's adaptive parenting. And I'm pretty proud of it. And the best is for the kid on the block. Yeah. We, uh, we're working on it, but beforehand, uh, we decided we would do what a lot of newlywed couples would do. Uh, we adopted a cat. Yeah. He's our little fur baby, except we had a grown cat. So he's more like a fur adult. Uh, he's a little different. His name is Melvin, uh, which is probably why he didn't get adopted as a kitten. 
<laughs> That's on you, Humane Society. Not a lot of people looking for a Melvin the cat. But I'm glad we adopted first because uh, it took about three days before I ran him over in this chair. <laughs> we got some dog people here, I see. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't paying attention and he got down in front of me and I, I pulled forward and I just heard... That is going to be a great picture, by the way. Uh, so I panicked, and I turned my chair off, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to keep going forward in case I hadn't run him all the way over. But I didn't want to back up in case I had. So I just froze, and my wife comes out, and she says, You're right on top of the cat! I'm like, no kidding, is that what that is? Which way do I go? So she says, back up. So I back up. And the cat flies out from underneath me in a string of cat fur and carpet samples. <laughs> and he gets up underneath the dining room table and he stays there for three days. He doesn't come out to eat. He doesn't come out to go to the bathroom. He just stayed there and growled at me as I rolled by for three days. <laughs> On the third night, he comes out and he gets right in my lap. And my wife says, oh, he forgives you. No, bless his heart. No, smart cat. He knows if he's on top of me, he can't be underneath me. Thank you. So I noticed that he's blinking a lot, like a unusual amount for a cat, which does make sense because instead of like a meow, it was more like a meow. So I might have got his face a little bit. I was, there was cat coming out on all four sides, so I don't know. But we took him to the vet, and the vet says he has post-traumatic ocular extrusion. Wow. Which sounds expensive. <laughs> Remember, we adopted this cat for $40. Which means, for $40, we get a new cat. <laughs> he says, no, basically, you just ran over his butt so hard that his eyes bugged out a little bit. That's just a joke, folks. It's just a joke. We didn't take the cat to the vet. <laughs> Thank you all so much. My name is Wes Johnson. Y'all been great. Thank you. Keep it going for Wes Johnson. to the stage. Very funny lady, another regular from the Comedy Zone.